Coming in from Logitech are the MX Keys. This is a keyboard from Logitech that promises to match up to the likes of the MX Master, one of the best mice that you can purchase on the planet. Uh, this is essentially the Logitech MX Craft without the uh, little dial at the top here and also it's considerably cheaper. Th although that said, this is still an expensive keyboard. Retailing at about £99 you can currently get it for as opposed to the £200 for the, the Craft. This does remove some of the features to make more of a, an everyday keyboard with the, the quality that they put into the Craft. So, having a look at the device, it says that it's got advanced wireless illuminated keyboard and then in various different languages it also repeats that. Then over here it has ultra fluid typing and again in different languages. Around the side there's a little bit of blurb. Around this side there's a, a profile picture. Then on the back we have this the, the, the sales blurb. That uh, perfect keystroke thing. Uh, comfort and stability, smart illumination, flow across multiple computers, which I'm particularly excited about. I, I have been looking to see if anyone's done this between Windows and Android, and I want to see if that can be done. Uh, I have one of these coming to me in the next few days, which is the MX Master 3. So this and the MX Master 3 should pair together particularly well. There is a list of the features for you to read. And let's get into it, because I'm busting to see what this is like. Okay, it actually says MX. Oh, you can see that on the camera. You can't really see it to the eye unless you slope it greatly. Okay, so it shows you up here that you do that to turn it on, and then you Max or Mac window use function of P, or you can connect via Bluetooth to whatever it happens to be. That show, seems to show a laptop. You can use the USB uh, dongle that they provide that has the Unity link. That's uh, it's very easy to uh, pair things up whenever you have this. And then there's a website there as well for you to go and get the setup guide. Obviously this is a, a keyboard so things are difficult to put in whenever you haven't got a keyboard, but even more difficult whenever you don't have a mouse. Right, we have the keyboard on top there. Then also we have the <laughs> presented for you to pull out is the USB, which doesn't it does say Logitech, but it's it's in black, so it's going to be. It has the unifying symbol there, so you should be able to find it. However, I have one of these currently, and it sits that way around in my USB. So I sometimes get confused between this and a USB 32 gigabyte storage that I use frequently. Inside this little box, we have USB cable some paraphernalia, a quick start guide I'm guessing, a battery removal and recycling, always useful. So you can take the battery out and place a new one in. So you can see it's a, a long flattish battery. But uh, obviously you need to do that before you throw this out. In years to come if it was to ever fail on you and you were or you would upgrade and just get rid of it in many a years. That's Logitech warrant or important safety and compliance warranty information and then also here you have a little advertisement for the MX Master 3. So we'll put that back in there. This is the charge cable which comes with a little velcro doohickey for uh, neatness, traveling, cable management, all that kind of thing. Always useful for that on a computer peripheral. It is a USB Type-C cable that says Logi on it. Actually looks like it's got a little bit of smile, you know, two eyes and a and a grin. Maybe that's the way they designed it. Uh, yes, it's grey. It's 
grey, it's not black grey and that doesn't have anything on it. And then wrapped up in tissue paper we have the keyboard itself. Wrapped in a lot of tissue paper and there it is. So it's a weighty brute uh, but it's solid, it's really solid feeling. You, you could club someone to death with it, and, and I'm leaving greasy marks on it already. This uh, does really feel quite nice. We obviously have a raised bit at the back there, you can see, um, where which houses the battery, and also it tends to flip it up just a little uh, to, so that it can be angled towards your fingertips. There is no adjustable raising, so you can't flip it up any more than it is. And if you don't like it and want it flat on the the desk, then tough. You're out of luck. There are rubber feet here to stop it from sliding. There are six in total, which is kind of nice. And uh, they work. It it slides, but you know it's it's not tough. It's not difficult to move, but it, it does require a bit of persuasion. Looking around the device, that's a clean end here. Clean down here, there's nothing along there. On this side, also clean. And then the only thing up here is the USB Type-C charging area and the power button. So having a look along the keyboard itself, there's a heck of a lot of functions here. Split buttons, it looks almost slightly complicated whenever it comes to it. You have escape and function sharing functions on the button. Uh, there's four here of various different is a cosine sign thing? Uh, I, I don't know. Um, lots of little functions on that one. That's probably one that people don't use terribly often unless they're programming or doing something mathematically. I don't know. You can correct me in the comments what, what all those are for. Tab, caps lock, shift, control. Option and the start button, command launcher and alt. And then we have this divided up as well. We have forward slash and pipe and tide and tilde, sorry. And uh, the other way facing apostrophe type caper. Uh, exclamation mark. And then we've got the at symbol or the inverted commas depending on your location. And then euro is also built in there as well. So that must be their way around making this uh, QWERTY for the world. Um, obviously there's Azerty as well and Cortez, but this probably helps them be a little bit more flexible when it comes to UK and the US because these can just be interchanged. It's going to be interesting to see how we select these. Pound sign with a, a hash symbol there as well, so be interesting to see how you must have to hit option and then that and that'll maybe make the hash as opposed to alt and then that which uh, oh, you know uh, euro is also here as well just to be difficult uh, percentage at all that kind of stuff then the most interesting one up here is your brightness functions here so that must be diminishing brightness and then increased brightness um, that's a button with four rectangles on it we'll have to have a play with that and see what it does then there's four or six squares on here. That looks familiar. That might be for. Uh, can't remember. And that's illumination probably for the the keyboard itself. And then some media buttons for fast forward, rewind, and pause. And then speaker control as well. Speaker off, up and down. Swap between various devices. And then your typical insert home and page up buttons. A generous cursor layout as well. And then over here we have calculator, dedicated screenshots, which is something I'm quite excited about. Um, I don't exactly know what that is, but we'll have a play. I'll, I'll dedicated lock button for locking and unlocking the computer. Another odd button with some symbols on it. Uh, and then your, your cursor pad on the far right. Then down here you have these keys repeated somewhat. You have the function button there obviously, but then the command and alt and then option and control, depending on which way you happen to be using, which, which your preference is for lefty and righty, I suppose. There's a, a good deep backspace button 
and then the delete there. Enter button is a pretty much a full enter button as you would expect, or return if you like. Then there's another one down here, which is your equals. Big shift button, smaller shift button, but tap and the space bar is quite large as well. Tapping the buttons, they they do feel they don't feel plastic, they feel silky smooth plastic. And there's a a decent amount of travel in them, despite the fact it's what, a chiclet kind of style. There is uh, a notable amount of travel um, for the for the size, the width of the keyboard, uh, or the depth of the keyboard, I suppose would be the best way. Um, so you do get minimal travel whenever you're actually typing, but you feel that you have pushed the button. And then, of course, the noise of the keyboard. Isn't terribly noisy. Uh, it's, it's not going to be a mechanical gaming gamer's keyboard's dream. But for a typist or someone who's uh, maybe doing a bit of computer programming or that sort of thing, uh, this, this does look to, to really fill, fill the need. One thing I will say is, on a little observation, is all of the buttons are lowercase, aside from the main keys, which is a bit odd. Your backspace is all lowercase, there's no uh, capital at the start of B. But then all of these are capitals. Even down here with the abbreviations and things like that, they, they are lowercase. That's something that I find kind of interesting. I wonder if they had a meeting. Should we have all of these in caps? Or should we have all of these in lowercase? Should we capitalize the C and the L? Who made that decision? Why? Why did they go for that? Why are these in uppercase and lowercase? Looking at other keyboards, for example, this one over here, the shift, the control, and the caps lock all start with capitalization. This one doesn't. Does that make it more playful? Does that make it more inviting? Who knows? But we're going to have to get this uh, turned on and see exactly how it works. So I'm going to go and connect it to my computer. Alright, so apologies for the crappy sound quality, but we had to move over to the other side of the room, to the other computer. This is now all set up and all singing, all dancing. I have the curtains open at the moment, so you can't see the backlight. Uh, However, it was glowing there. Every time I go close to the keyboard, the keyboard does glow. And having a quick look around the key, uh, the keyboards, what this does is essentially it brings up the calculator on the screen. Doesn't close it again afterwards, which is a bit of a pain, but it brings it up on the screen. This takes a screenshot of your desktop. You can set it up in the software to do a little bit more, not much, but a little bit more. And it essentially does print screen and then you can dump it into whatever you are using by pasting. So it doesn't bring up a, a, a second tool or anything like that. This is essentially like using your right click on your mouse button. Whenever you press it, uh, you've just done that. This is my old MX or Master. And then the lock button locks your computer. This is your number lock button, although it doesn't say it. That's a padlock with a one in it so it's a number lock and I haven't managed to get the other side of this function working you can see the lights have come on again there then moving along we switch between different computers I find if you hold it in it works a little better to switch between one and the other I don't have my Android tablet nearby so it's not lighting up and then this raises and lowers the brightness of the actual keyboard for which I will close the curtains to demonstrate. Now, much has been said about the battery life of the keyboard. Apparently on full brightness, this should last about 10 days of being on, seven to 10 days, they say. However, you can play around with some of the settings and allow you and you can manage to change it so that if the backlight is off, it can last up to 70 days on one charge. And then if you have it so that at the moment it is currently off, it's like a, a battery saving, and I go close to it, it'll light up again. That should There should be a happy medium there, and I guess it depends on how much you use it. Uh, will depend on how long that lasts.
It's a very handy little feature. Uh, I would like it to stay on a little longer. Uh, because if you have a, a thought pattern and you disappear off for a, a few seconds and then come back over, the keyboard has already gone off. And, you <laughs> and I can't help but worry in these early stages if it's going to come back on again. But it does. You don't have to touch it. It has a proximity sensor in it uh, and it, it just does what you would like it to do. Now, these buttons over here, I press this one and it brings in your Microsoft uh, notification hub on Windows. This one flips between your virtual desktops which is a very handy little function. I, I love that. Uh, you hold it in, select which one you want, let go and you're there. Uh, the brightness is for the screen brightness as opposed to the actual brightness of the keyboard so on a, on the desktop as I'm using I will have not much use for those. In fact even hitting them doesn't really do too much. If I hold that down and then press the escape key, that turns on your functions uh, by default and keeps them locked in function mode. You can also uh, change these between the function 1 and function 2 and set up what the function 1 and function 2 do in the app. And then there's a load of other little functions that'll, that'll work themselves out over time. I'm not entirely sure how to flip between the at and the speech marks up there, however that could be more down to your actual territory. Um, I don't think you can do that on the fly, it depends on how your computer is set up, but it means if you hook this up to a computer, if you take it with you on holiday or on business and hook it up to a computer where you happen to be going, uh, you can flip it over um, so that you're pressing the right button depending on your region or location. One thing that some of the videos that I had watched did, failed to mention was the radius at which you can use this on your computer. When you have the unifying connector plugged into your computer, as I do off, it's, it's down in the back of the desktop. Uh, this is my old one that I pulled out in favour of the new one in case there's been some drastic change. Uh, you can take this away up to 10 metres. I haven't quite tried it, but... 10 meters does seem to be uh, a pretty decent <laughs> distance, so you could use this if you're using it on a media PC that's connected to the computer, or to the television, for example. Uh, and I would imagine that would be 10 meters of unbroken line of sight uh, connectivity, uh, but at 2 meters or something it may work through a brick wall or something like that. So uh, that's, that's food for thought if you are picking up one of these. However, using it on a on a sofa for a media setup, it's heavy. There's many better options for that. However, it is a, a good looking, durable uh, keyboard that, that you can chuck around considerably um, and it, it won't show up any of the bumps or warts as easily as some of the other keyboards out there. However, it is heavy. So keep that in mind if you're using it for anything other than on the desktop. Alright, so that pretty much brings us to the end of, of what this, this does. Uh, I'll be back having a look at the MX Master 3 when it arrives in a couple of days. If you've got any questions about this, let me know in the comments box down below. I'll do my best to give you some kind of sarcastic answer. Hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. And remember to tune in to TalkSport on a Wednesday morning at half past midnight for Inspect Your Gadget. Check out techaddicts.uk for information on the Tech Addicts podcast. And other than that, take care.